my problem, and we'll see if this was your problem as well, is that I followed all of previous other YouTube videos instructions on how to uninstall Ubuntu. I deleted the partition using disk management, went into the command prompt, and did the boot rec forward slash fxr whatever that was i followed all the instructions of other youtube videos yet when i went to reboot my computer ubuntu was still listed in my bios as a bootable option and i wanted ubuntu completely gone i tried ubuntu 21.04 it was terrible i hate it i wanted to use an either an older version of ubuntu or try a totally different linux distributor altogether it was very hard to figure out how to fix this i've been told that this is not a one size fits all so if this does not work for your situation i'm sorry i currently have a x470 aorus wi-fi gaming 7 motherboard with a ryzen 7 2700x it's different for every computer so i hope this helps you guys this is what i found that helped me so instead of me going to command prompt which all you'd have to do is just go to start type in command prompt and then right click on here and run as administrator i thought it'd be easier to actually go through the instructions that i followed because what they have for these instructions is exactly what I did with a few exceptions and I wanted to go over those exceptions with you because uh, it will make a difference. This tutorial is excellent but there are some changes that you have to do with this tutorial. So first off, you'll see here that it says administrator. You have to log into command prompt as administrator and then the first thing you're going to type is disk part. It's underlined in red right here. Once you do that, this will show up, Microsoft Disk Park version, it'll say the version, it'll say who's on this computer. They give Shanti as an example. Then after you load Disk Part, this, will, this is what's gonna show up right here. And you'll type in list disk. Now for here, they only had one disk. That's why it says disk zero status online, 465 gigabytes uh, size, 221 gigabytes free. This is important, GPT is the type of partition it is. I actually have several hard drives in my computer and then one one NVMe that my operating system is installed on. For me, it said disk zero, disk one, disk two, disk three, disk four. This might be a little bit trial and error, so make sure that you follow this step by step because everything kind of chains. Chances are that if you have a disk that says GPT on it and it says it's not being used because you have already deleted the partition that had Ubuntu on it, that's probably the disk you're going to want to load up. It'll have a star here saying that it's a GPT partition. That's not always true, but that's a good place to start. So go ahead and start with that when you load up your disks. If it looks like it's the correct size and it has GPT with a star next to it, go ahead and select that one by typing in next SEL and then disk and then right here they selected disk zero for you it would be whichever one you think it was that ubuntu was installed on you got to be careful because you don't want to erase windows so select disk zero and it says here disk zero is now the selected disk then you're going to type in list volume it's written right here and you'll have something like this pop up now if you'll notice over here it says ntfs ntfs fat 32 ntfs ntfs if you look over here it says info boot hidden, system, hidden, hidden. The volume within that disk that is going to have the file that causes Ubuntu's bootloader to be an option in your BIOS when you first turn on your computer is going to be a FAT32 file, which if you look over here, it says FAT32 partition, and it's also going to be a system file. So if you look over here, it says info system. It'll probably be the only one that says FAT32, and it'll say system over here in info. So once you've determined your value, Volume, you're going to continue on and type in SEL for select volume 2. Yours might be different. It might be volume 4. Again, it all depends which volume has FAT32. Once you've done that, you need to assign that volume a letter. So in here, he assigns it to letter D. I could not use D because D was already the assigned letter for my disk drive. I couldn't use C, obviously, because C drive is just staple everyone knows that c drive is what your windows system is installed on so i assigned it to a letter g because g was far enough down the alphabet that i didn't have to worry about it confusing it with any other drive letter you got to type it in just like he has it here assign space then he spells l e t t e r equal sign and then he chose d with a colon then it'll say if you did it disk part successfully assigned to the drive letter or mount point then you can type in exit and it'll leave disk part and it'll take you back to windows system 32. Now that you have done that, you, you got to now mount that drive. So you're going to type in CD space forward slash D, just like what's written here and underlined space. And here they have written D for me. I use the letter G. 
So whatever letter you pick, that's the letter you're gonna put right there. Once you do that, and spell it out just like this, hit enter. This is where they actually went wrong and I'm not sure why. This article was in 2015. So I don't know if it used to work like this in 2015 and times have changed or he made a mistake because this looks more like a, a Linux command right here than a uh, Windows command. But right here it says D, which, cause remember he mounted D drive. So for me it was G and for you it's gonna be whatever letter you assign. It says D colon backwards slash and then it's got the arrow pointing and then he typed in ls that is incorrect what you're actually going to want to type is dir for direct so dir not ls right here it gives the example and this makes me think maybe this is just an older article because here he gives the example it says bootsect.bak efi system value information for me it gave me something completely different i actually don't remember what it was but that's okay whatever it gives you after you type that don't worry about it because the next thing you're going to type is instead of ls efi or efi you're gonna type in D-I-R-E-F-I. -E so right here where it says LS, change that to D-I-R. And then it's gonna show you what your boots are. It's gonna, like for example here, it shows boot Microsoft Ubuntu. Mine actually listed it differently. It listed it up and down right here. It had like a period, a period, and then it said Microsoft, and then underneath Microsoft it said Ubuntu. So then next you would type in CD, which is your command to mount, space, EFI and hit enter. And then after you do that, you're going to type in again, not LS. I don't know why he put LS here. You're going to type in DIR and then hit enter. And it's going to select again a list of boot from Microsoft or Ubuntu. It's going to say several different, depending on your system, it'll say something different. But if you see Ubuntu there, then you need to type in RMDIR space forward slash S space. Ubuntu and hit enter. What this is going to do is it's going to delete that boot folder for Ubuntu and it's going to say Ubuntu are you sure yes or no you're going to hit Y and hit enter and it will delete that and then after you're done you type in right here where he says LS no do not type in LS type in DIR and hit enter and then once you're done with that you can type in exit command prompt and then when you restart your computer you can hit F12 to go into your boot selection option to see what you can boot and Ubuntu will be gone. Hopefully this helps you out. It was kind of a pain in the butt trying to get this to work for me. So I hope this helps you with uh, restoring Windows 10 back to new. So that way, if you want to continue to experiment with Linux like I do, but you don't want to use the newest version of Ubuntu, I hope this fixes your problem. So thanks for watching.